Today, we're going to automate delivering an SSH payload with an expect script on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you're getting into automation, then bash scripting is usually the way to go. There are, however, a couple different limitations, and one of them is if you wanted to do something like log into a Raspberry Pi and automatically run a script. Now the hiccup here is that bash scripting is more like duct taping things together. It isn't able to do everything, including being able to anticipate and then react to certain variables. So in this case, we're going to be using an expect script to log into our Raspberry Pi and automatically shut it down, although we could adapt this to instead pass pretty much any payload. Now in order to follow along, you'll need a Linux computer. Although I'm using a Mac OS computer, you can also use a Ubuntu computer or Kali Linux. If you get confused, you can also check out the null byte link in the description. Once you have a Linux computer, then we can get started. Today, we're going to learn a little bit about expect scripts. And expect scripts are usually used in conjunction with bash scripts in order to automate certain things like maybe scanning a network or delivering a payload. And because the two work so well together, it's possible to automate all sorts of interesting things. So our example today is going to be actually knocking any Raspberry Pis on the network that are using default credentials off the network. So to do that, I'm going to type ls. And here you can see the scripts we're going to be working with today. And if you want to check these out, you can also find them in the link in the description in the Nullbyte article. So first, we have a couple of different scripts. We're going to be looking at the trigger.sh, which is our bash script, and the expect.exp script. And to understand what the expect script is doing, let's take a look at the trigger script first. So first, let's open a bash script and see what it looks like inside. We can see we have the standard um, shebang with the bin bash and it echoes what is the enemy passcode. It asks for the user to supply a passcode, which it saves as a variable called login pass, and then it opens an expect script. Now what we can see on the next line is that we are running an expect script, which is the one that we see up here, and they're essentially passing it three variables. The first one is the result of a scan. And you can see if you followed our last bash scripting tutorial that here the result of this command is going to run and then print before anything else happens. So here you can see the script is running an ARP scan. So it's searching the entire network. It's looking for anything with the word Raspberry. So it's hunting for Raspberry Pis. And then it is printing the IP address from the uh, scan so that we have it here as our target. Then it's passing the username, which in this case is root. And then it's also passing the password that the user has suggested here. So when we run it, we should see something like this. First, we'll type ls. We can see it's trigger.sh. So we'll type bash trigger.sh. Uh, it's going to ask us for the passcode. In this case, let's pick the wrong one so it crashes. We'll type something crazy. And then it's going to go ahead and call. Oh, let me see. It's spawning an SSH script. It's trying to uh, pass the reboot command, in this case, to try to reboot the Raspberry Pi. But because we give it a bunch of uh, jumbled up mismatched password stuff, it's not going to work. So it's also asking us if we want to log in. We'll type yes. And then it's attempting to log into the Raspberry Pi. But it can't because we give it the wrong password. But look at all this activity. We actually managed to get this to select a Raspberry Pi on the network. And we didn't actually give it the IP address first. So how did all this work? So as you saw, we gave a little bit of information to the expect script first. We used our bash script, and I'll cat this again so we can see it. We used the bash script to get the password that we wanted. And we also used a, our bash script to scan the network using an ARP scan, identify a Raspberry Pi, and then print the IP address in order to give us an advantage. So we didn't have to first ask the user where the Raspberry Pi was on the network. Now, we also have a hard-coded username here, which is the root uh, username, which is in all Raspberry Pis. So basically, this is kind of inspired by the Raspberry Pi Hunter made by Buses Can Fly, which is something that hunts for Raspberry Pis using default credentials on the network, attempts to log into them, and then send payloads. So let's take a look at the expect script and exactly what it's doing. We're going to cat the expect script. And here you can see that it doesn't look exactly like the bash script did. We have the shebang, but instead it's going to user slash bin slash expect tac f. And then we have a couple more variables. So for one, we have a timeout, which is set to 20 seconds. 
we have um, the IP, which is set to the first argument that we're passing. In this case, that's going to be the result of this ARP scan. So this is the uh, Raspberry Pi's IP address is being saved here as the IP address by its position here. And we can use the uh, Lindex arg v and then a position starting with zero in order to indicate that this is the first argument. It does start at zero, um, something to remember. But this is the first argument. This is the second argument, in this case, the username, which is hard coded in our bash script. And then this is the third argument. Um, so this is the password that the user up here has supplied when we run the bash script. So basically what's happening here is we're running the expect script and then we're giving it three arguments. And then the expect script is taking these arguments and putting them into three variables. IP, which is the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. User, which is the uh, username we've hard coded here, just root and then password. And this is the password that the user from our bash script has entered. Now, this is where things get interesting. Expect scripts can spawn processes. And here we are spawning an SSH process and we're using the, the variables basically the same way we would in bash. So here we're taking the user variable, which is just root in our case. And then we're typing basically root at and then IP, so the dollar sign and then IP. In this case, the IP address that is the result of the scan up here. And uh, then finally, we are passing some sort of command. So as soon as we are logged into, in this case, root at whatever the IP address is, then we're going to tell it that we want it to reboot. Okay, so this is all going to happen, but first we're going to use the expect part of the script. And this is where it gets its name, where we're looking for something that is basically coming to us and, and typing the string password. Now that's funny, but the reason we do that is so that if it is a capital P or a lowercase p, it really doesn't matter. Depending on what server it is, it's always going to ask us for a password. So unless it's in all caps, which is a little bit less likely, then we're likely to get most of the different uh, ways of asking us for a password. So here what the script is doing is it's expecting uh, for a request or, or a text string to say password. And if it gets that, then it goes ahead and sends the result, which in our case is the password the user typed way back in our bash script. So, all right, that's pretty cool. And what this means is we're able to automate our SSH session so that we're automatically in this line logging into the Raspberry Pi we're waiting to get the prompt for the password. And then as soon as we do, we do, we're sending the variable that the user entered way back up in the bash script. Now, expect scripts are not interactive, and that's why we have to use bash scripts to pass in information. Uh, for example, we can't have user input directly in this expect script. It's very annoying that we can't. So as a result, it works very well to have a bash script that gathers all the information you need, passes it to an expect script, and then that expect script will automate something. So let's take a look at what this looks like when we pass everything together. Now let's go ahead and make sure that all this is working. We're gonna go ahead and run our bash script, the trigger.sh, and we'll use our password. And one thing to keep note of is that if you're logging into something via SSH for the first time, it'll first ask you to, you to confirm. So I am not going to do that because I've already logged into this Pi, but this will probably break your bash script if you've already, uh, if you haven't already logged in once. There we go. We can see it's spawning an SSH session. It successfully detected a Raspberry Pi on the network and passed that as one of the variables. It's requesting the password and boom, closed by the remote host. So what did we do? We basically use this script to seek out a Raspberry Pi on the network. We used a default credential, or rather our own credential, in order to automatically log into it. And then we passed a command, in this case, the reboot command, causing the Raspberry Pi to reboot and kick us out. Pretty awesome use of an expect script, and there are lots of different things you can do with it. So this is just scratching the surface of how you can take an expect script and use it to actually do things that otherwise would require a lot more user interaction. Expect scripts are incredibly useful for things like creating chatbots or dealing with anything where you have a input you're expecting and a response you want to automate. Now combined with bash scripts, you can automate all sorts of powerful tools. So this is just a beginning and I hope you are able to use it to create some really interesting automations and I hope you also share those with us. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you got confused, you can check out the null byte link in the description. And if you have any idea for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.